what actually is a whinging pom? If you're thinking about moving to Australia and you come from England, get ready because you're going to be called a whinging pom. But what actually is one? I found this old archive footage of a guy visiting Australia back in the day to find out what is a whinging pom. Have you ever heard of a whinging pom? Yeah, I've been called one a few times. He's becoming quite a figure in modern Australian folklore. You can read about him in practically every newspaper, practically every day. Pom, as you probably know, is the Australian word for the Englishman. And whinging is a derisive term for complaining. Put them together and the whinging pom is the kind of new Australian that the old Australian loathes and despises beyond all others. This guy sounds like a dictionary. So if he was giving the dictionary definition, my face would be the one that he would see. Apparently. And at this particular town, at this particular time, the whinging pom is very much in the news. The pay is poor. Uh, there's no overtime as we expected there would be. Uh, housing situation, that's very bad. You can tell he's a pom. What Australian would want to go for some overtime? I mean, if they're paying for it, then they probably would do. Uh, living accommodation in the hostels is disgusting. The average wage is about £16 a week. That's what it'd work out. Is that enough to manage on here? Definitely not, no. What are you doing? Are you living out of funds or what? Um, well, I've moved in with a friend into a bungalow and we're sort of buying in bulk and sharing between us and it's working out. So this guy sounds like he's moved over here on his own. I guess when the first whinging poms came over here on boats, it probably would have been really, really difficult living on your own. Especially today, living in some of the cities like Sydney or Melbourne, even things like accommodation. If you're trying to just get accommodation on your own, it is really expensive and you're probably going to have to live in with other people. I remember when I first started out in England and I lived in shared accommodation and there were eight of us in that house. Eight. I loved living with so many people. Friday nights were great. We had no money and yet we still enjoyed our lives. But this looks like it was 50, 60 years ago. And I guess people just didn't live with others. You've been here 10 years now. Yes. Would you say you're better off now than you would have been if you'd stayed in England? He looks like he's gonna be a whinging pom. Not stereotyping at all. Both financially and in health. In what way now? What well, can you do that you couldn't do back in England, financially? Well, I'm buying my own house. It's costing me 29 pound per month. That's seven pound ten a week, which is about what six pound a week, six pound ten a week English money. English money, quite a lot, in fact. It's it's a, a heck of a lot. I have my own car. My house is fully furnished, and everything in it belongs to me. I have a, a block of land on which the house is built, and that cost me six hundred pound. It's now worth in the region of thirteen hundred pound. I have money in the bank. Well, all in all, I'm a happy man. Is he really happy? The guy sounds like he's low-key angry. Oh, I bought some land and it's gone up in value. Hmm. I can't figure out if this guy is happy or not. He is not helping the stereotype of the whinging pom if he's happy. And he's got a lot to be happy about. But he's still a bit moody. Poor bugger. I'm sure he's got reason. How do you find Australians? Oh, well... Did he just smile? I think that was a smile. He's putting this on. This is all an act. All in all, they're a good crowd. If you mix in with them, become one of them, don't be standoffish, they are a good crowd. You do get called names, call them names back and they enjoy it. That guy has literally figured out the key to understanding Australians. And what person doesn't love a bit of banter in your life? It would be boring if you didn't. Don't be standoffish, throw yourselves out there and get ready to take the piss. Because Australians will do that to you, whether you like it or not. Now, Mrs Dunham, do you feel that the picture you were given of Australia before you came out here was fair, or do you think you were taken in in any way? Where is it that she's living? It looks like a World War II prison camp. Is this what people had to move over to back in the day? What was it like on the emigration brochure? Come to Australia. You can live in a shed? If she was sold something that wasn't what she got, I completely understand why you would be a little bit annoyed. Well, yes, I think we were taken in. In what way? Well, we were promised... Um, employment for one thing for the women and there wasn't any and there still isn't any and we promised so we would jobs for the girl 16 year old she is and she couldn't get job now what she wanted she just had to take fat to work the australian salute one thing i never really anticipated when moving to australia would be how many flies there are this poor lady's already got used to the aussie salute and for some that could be a major cause of whinging how long she have you been away? out here now six months six months and have you been living in the hostel all that time yes what's that life in the hostel like well it's not too bad it could be better i suppose how long have you got to wait here then do you think 
wait for the commission house, which is the um, same as a council house in England. It's said two to three years, where now, I think with all the people coming in, it's three years. For the majority of people moving to Australia now, if you're on a temporary or permanent residency visa, you're still not entitled to anything. So the fact that they've been able to be provided with some accommodation makes you wonder if they should be a little bit more grateful for. If people are going to move country, particularly from one side of the world to the other, then you're going to want to know that you're going to get a better lifestyle. And I don't know what this lady's life would have been like before they moved, but if they now live in this, it makes you wonder what they came from. Have you managed to save much since you've been here? I haven't here? saved anything. Not me. Well, you wouldn't be able to save anything if you've not been earning. This is the first sight of their new life. And it doesn't look much like anyone's idea of a brave new world. This does look like a World War II prisoner camp. This is the Barclay Hostel, now exclusively for British migrants, with accommodation for around 600. The huts are divided into sections. The size of your section depends on the size of your family. Lavatories and washing facilities are in separate huts set between the rows, and they're shared with perhaps 10 other families. Can you imagine moving anywhere for that? Is it fair that people would be a little bit annoyed that they'd be stuck living in these kind of accommodations for so long? I wouldn't have made the move for that, would you? Feeding is communal in large dining halls. Looks a bit like a Butlin's holiday camp now, but just in black and white. One good thing about hostel life is that it's cheap, and it's tied to the breadwinner's wage packet. One of the conditions of residence is that each family must have at least three pounds to spare each week after the hostel bill is paid. Other hostels are more prepossessing. This one is at Unandera near the works, and here the huts are chalet type. Ooh, chalet. Does calling it that make it actually any better? Cars between them and concrete walkways along the sides. But Unandera houses only 250. Eating, toilet facilities and recreation rooms are still communal. Mr Stevenson, you're, you've come from Yorkshire, haven't you? Yes. How long have you been out here now? Yorkshire? She's going to be a happy-go-lucky lady. A year and three months. And you've been all that time in the hostel? Yes. Do you see any chance of getting out of it? Well, slight chance at the moment. I don't know how it's going to go. What's it going to cost you, do you think, when you leave the hostel and set up home on your own? More than it would cost in England, I think. So were things back in the day more expensive as well? I know if you wanted to move to Australia maybe 20 years ago, the exchange rate was pretty good. And it would have been like moving to the other side of the world and everything being cheaper. Roughly how much? Well, we'd probably be paying about £7 a week. £7 a week. And That's... what deposit do you have to put down? It's about £6 English money. And what, yes. what deposit do you oh, have to put down? Oh, £800. £800? Yes, on this house. and It, it is a four-year-old house. Have you saved that 800 since you've been here? We saved about five. We saved well when we first came because my husband got the work. Is he still getting that work? Not as much, no. Not anywhere near as much. How much are you able to save now? We haven't saved anything for quite a while now. Sounds like most English people when they came over here, they were promised with lots of work and they really wanted to work. So is this whinging pom idea brought out of the fact that they didn't really get what they thought they were going to receive? From an economic migrant perspective, you're going to know that when you move over to the other side of the world, that you're going to get the work that you need to support the lifestyle that you want. Even 50, 60 years ago, I don't think there's many people that would want to live in that lifestyle for very long. And I'm starting to feel a little bit sad for the amount of people that went out and tried to give it a go, and it didn't really work out for them. And that's what they got. Well, how do living costs compare here in Australia? One of the things which is supposed to be cheaper is food. And I'm waiting here outside the supermarket for Mrs. Sue Lovelock to come out, who's been in there buying some shopping. And we're going to see how the prices compare. Oh, here you are. Yes, she's already. Now, oh, what have you got, Sue? Size of that shopping trolley. Well, what's this? Have to eat. And what's the price of that? Two, Two and, and a penny. penny. Now, that's about one and, one, eight eight. one and eight English money, isn't it? What's that in England? This is about one and two. One and two, okay. so we're a bit dearer there, aren't we? Let's try, now this is bacon, four and sevenpence. That's four and Four seven. and sevenpence, just about, that's five and four, three and ten English money. Yes, that would be about two and four. Two and four, yes. so that's well in advance of English prices. Oval, that's right, yes, oval teen. Four and threepence, say, uh, three and six, three, so three that and... That would be about five and six, about home, so that is cheap. So that's cheaper, that's, that's one of the things that's cheaper. One and eleven. What's this? Uh, golden syrup. One and eleven, say one and one and seven. That would be about two and six. Two and six. Oh, well, this is a very essential thing. Now, uh, that's one and seven, say one and three. Um, well, you could get two back home, <laughs> that size. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, Sue. Thank you. So it seems like for Sue's the same as what we have now. Some things are more expensive, some things are cheaper. 
even if you were in your own country and prices started to change for the products that you'd get, you'd just switch, wouldn't you? Unfortunately, you can't move to the other side of the world and get exactly the same as what you had without some kind of adaptation. Some migrants, particularly those with three or more children, may find hostile living very hard to escape from. But sooner or later, they do get out. This is the home of Mr. and Mrs. Kilpatrick from Darlington, a two-bedroom flat with a cooking corner in the living room. He is an inspector in the steelworks. He earns the equivalent of 28 pounds sterling a week, which is 11 pounds more than he was earning in Britain. They've just moved out. They're getting paid more. This is the ideal, isn't it? Let's see what they've got to say. What do you think it is that upsets the migrants who want to return? Or say they're getting a raw deal here? Come on, mate, tell us. Why do we have whinging poms? Well, personally, I don't think they're giving it a chance. Uh, they go in, they get a job. Of course, in all jobs, you've got to go in the pool. That means to say, you yeah, probably give me a sweeping brush to sweep up with, uh, and then they see what uh, kind of a bloke you're at, and then you get picked for your job. I've seen men there, they've been uh, at work, they've been playing war the first uh, two or three weeks they've been there. They're there six months, they're very happy because they've been promoted, they've got good jobs, they've got good pay. they'll give it a chance. Absolutely, isn't that how it should be? People promoted based on their merit, if you want to work hard, you're going to get recognised, you're going to get promoted, you get more money! That's the dream! So why would people whinge? Would you say that the fellows who do succeed when they come out here have to have a different attitude from the one they had in England? Oh, definitely. I mean to say, unless you come over with money, a lot of money, uh, you just have to start saving yourself if you have none, if you know what I mean. This guy's telling us exactly what you should hear. Put yourself out there, work hard, and you'll get what you want. So were we saying the whinging poms are the ones that didn't do this, and that's why we're whinging? Yeah, I don't feel too sorry for those types of whinging poms. Now, how do you find things in Australia? Do you prefer the Australian way of life or not? No, I don't. Because um, it's more outdoor life here, and, you know, I like, like the dances and watching the TV programmes and that. They're not pretty good out here that side, with that side. Aussie TV programs haven't got much better, but you don't move to the other side of the world just to watch Aussie TV, do you? I also appreciate that the outdoor lifestyle isn't for everyone either. This lady loves the dances, and I guess back then you wouldn't get many dances on a World War II prison camp. Just because in Australia they speak English, they drive on the left, and everything kind of looks the same, it isn't. It's a different way of lifestyle. I think this lady was expecting her whole life in the UK to be the same as her new life in Australia. And unfortunately, it just isn't. Some things are better, a lot better, but some things are worse or just might not be there. 50, 60 years ago, you couldn't really do your research and you were basically living off what someone else was telling you. Now, you can. So if you don't do your research and you come over here blindly, then you might end up being a whinging pom. What sort of programs do you miss? Mm, things like Top of the Pops and, you know, teenage programs. What about you now, Kevin? Do you like it here better, or...? Uh, I think I like it here better. Good on you, Kevin. Do you? Mm. What do you like about it here? Oh, well, the sands, and I like going surfing on me as surfer plane. Kevin is living the dream. And an important thing to think about is how much better is it going to be for your kids? I, for one, would rather have my kids be out surfing and potentially dodging sharks rather than spending their time in nightclubs doing things that you do in nightclubs. There are some who just don't think there's anything in Australia worth waiting so long for. Now, Mrs. Parsons, was the Australia you found here the Australia you expected before you came out here? No, it wasn't. In what ways did it differ? Well, I find the weather very much like back home. Which part of Australia is she from? Yes, there are some parts of the Australian climate that are very similar to the UK. Tasmania, for example. And it's also not fair to say that you don't have all of the seasons here. Because you do in many of the southern states. Maybe she's just not in the right bit of Australia. Maybe she should have moved to sunny southeast Queensland like us. Um, it's very changeable. We've had how and rain, you know, as well as sun. Not so much sun as I expected. If you want more sun, love, move closer to the equator. They've got a very nice day today and a beach just at the bottom of the garden almost. Uh, doesn't this make up for some of the things you're missing? No, well, I'm not sporting type. I do, I do like swimming, but not enough, you know, for the beach to fascinate me and that, but such a lot. Sounds like this lady's more of an urban dweller. She wants more of the city lifestyle rather than the rural one.
Now, I guess that's the same as today. If you're fortunate to get over here on a permanent residency visa, then you can pretty much live wherever you want and you're less likely to become a whinging pom. But if you're moving here on a temporary visa or a skill shortage visa, then you might not have as much flexibility about where it is that you're gonna move. So do your research, find out what it's like, set your expectations, and hopefully you don't end up being someone that in a few years time ends up moving back with tales of how terrible it was. Do you think that the people who do complain that uh the British are just the complaining types, that the other people don't complain as much. Do you think those people have anything in what they say? Well, I think we've had it a lot better back home. And when you come out to this, it isn't quite the same. I think it's probably right in saying that British people do love to complain. We're a nation of complainers. And for some people, their country of origin is the best place to live in the world. So why would you get on a plane and move to the other side of the world then? If you love where you live, and that's fine, stay there, enjoy your life. Aren't we all just enjoying the passage of time? But just because you enjoy it, doesn't mean that someone else is going to. The two countries are very different and there's no flat comparison. What kind of people do you think they are then who make a success of their life in Australia? Well, people who haven't had it so good, that haven't had any money before, I suppose. What, the down and destitute? Anywhere can be the land of opportunity if what you're coming from was terrible. But if you've had it so great, I'm still wondering why you moved in the first place. Well, will you stick it out? No, I hope to go back soon, since we've got enough money. Isn't this rather drastic? Don't you think there's only homesickness and after a little while would wear off? No, I don't think they have anything to offer me at all. Well, I'm glad that she's looked at all of the aspects of her life and she doesn't think a life in Australia will fulfil her. And I guess that's the point. Wherever you're coming from, when you move to Australia, you've got to think about what is your life like and what do you hope to achieve from your new one? Because unfortunately, Australia can't give you everything. There are so many opportunities out here to change your life. But if you've already got everything that you want in your country of origin, don't move. This is the world that we live in. Some people are happy and some people are looking for something else. Just make sure you're looking in the right place. I think there's definitely something in the nature of the whinging pom. British people do love a moan. And Australians, probably not so much. If you're making the move out here, then you're going to be more successful if you embrace the new culture and the new lifestyle that comes with it. Yes, you're allowed to recognise things that aren't quite exactly what you'd expect, and you are allowed to moan about things that are worse. But don't keep whinging about it. It's not going to change. And if you do, you're going to get called a whinging pom. And remember old mate who said you've got to give back as much as you get. If any Aussies start whinging, ask them if their parents were British. Maybe they're whinging poms deep down too. If like most of the people in this video, you're wanting to move to Australia for work, then watch this video to see why it's better to work in Australia than perhaps anywhere else.